a viewer of mine, Grant in Australia, Grant Banch. Hi, Grant, if you're watching this. He has his own Elvis podcast, and he recently interviewed me for his podcast. And uh, I've left a link in the video description below. And if you click on that, it's the homepage for the site that hosts his podcast. And you'll see a link for my interview and interviews he's done with other people as well related to uh, Elvis. Anyway, in that interview, he asked me, amongst other things, about my most treasured Elvis items. And I said, you know, what I said. But later I remembered one other album which I forgot to mention. And I'm going to show you that album at the end of this video. It is related to today's topic, which is Elvis is Back. It's been a while since I did a video showing all the copies that I have of a particular album. And I'm going to be focusing today on my UK copies of the Elvis is Back album because uh, over the years, somehow I've amassed eight copies of Elvis is Back from the UK. So I'm going to go in reverse order, the uh, most recent one first, which is this one here from 1977. Strangely, this cover is fully laminated. It seems unusual for a 1977 cover. But the LP with this matte label is from 1977. This is very similar to the records that I had when I was first collecting UK copies from the mid 1970s. And you can see that the cover is in a single sleeve, not gatefold. The earliest copies had a gatefold sleeve. This is another one from the 1970s. This one is only laminated on the front, not on the back. This one is actually from 1971 and it has the uh, smooth orange labels or glossy labels. Then we're going back into the 1960s and uh, this one here is still in the single sleeve. Not quite as tidy as the other two. Somebody's written 1960 on here, but in fact, this is uh, a much later copy than that. It's a red spot copy. And this is stereo, in fact. Stereo red spot copy. This is actually from 1968. And it's not in the Elvis UK book, this particular label variant. There's no tax code on there. But in the run-out grooves, I did find one on one side. Um, there it is, JT. So it has a, ta a JT tax code, so it's from 1968. That's quite an unusual one, that one. The next one is the latest monopressing that I have. This one is still in the single sleeve. And it's another red spot. This one is from 1965. That one does have a MT tax code on the labels. The latest one that I have in the gatefold is actually the worst gatefold that I have. That's this one here from 1964. And it might be difficult to make out, but the laminate has been removed from the front and the back completely and it's darkened a bit with age and that's the inside of the gatefold similar to the American version and this here is a little pocket so the record just sits in there and this part is also laminated but the laminate is still on there so it's 1964 so this one is also a red spot Slightly different label design to the 65 version. This next one is the first one that I bought as an adult. The first UK copy I bought maybe about 10 years ago now. This is a 1960 pressing. Again, it's in mono. Much nicer cover than the one from 64.
and this has the early label design with that big silver RCA logo. The next copy that I have is another mono one and I bought this one in Japan as an upgrade to the one we just looked at. I was actually quite happy with that one but this one is just so unbelievably good that I just couldn't resist it. Pretty much like new with this cover which is really really hard to find in this condition because the covers are so flimsy and quite a few of these albums by the way I've got the original you know sleeves as well but this one the record is just absolutely immaculate so lucky to get that one This album was really successful in Britain. It actually got into the UK singles chart. And I think it was just after this album got into the singles chart that they put a stop to all that nonsense. Because I think otherwise GI Blues and certainly Blue Away would have got into the singles charts as well. It's hard to believe, isn't it? An LP outselling most of the singles. So the last one uh, that I have here, this is the one that I was talking about earlier. This is one of the um, real treasures in my collection. There's a bit of a story to this one. So uh, well, where should we begin? Okay, I'll show you the cover first of all. This is another one from 1960. Now, this is actually a stereo pressing. But if you look really closely at the top there, you can see it's a stereo, but that's actually a sticker. And the story behind this particular copy is, it's one of the first stereo ones. And it was actually owned by an executive at RCA in the UK and they didn't have any stereo copies, uh, stereo covers at the time. So they just stuck this little stereo uh, logo here on top of the mono logo. And in fact, it's exactly the same font that they used for the later stereo covers. There's the back cover. You can see it says mono on the back there. It's just not quite as, as good as the mono copy that we just looked at, the mono cover. And this is the LP. So if you're a collector of uh, Elvis UK records, you'll know just how hard it is to find one of these suckers. Living Stereo, Elvis is back from 1960. It looks like it's never been played. And uh, just to round things off, it does actually have its original in a sleeve as well. Somebody's written some of the track timings on the back and they've even put number two next to side A track three, which is the girl of my best friend. And that might refer to the chart position of that particular single because Mess of Blues and the girl of my best friend reached number two in the UK while we were waiting for It's Now or Never, which was delayed. And uh, just to wrap things up, I'll show you a couple of other related releases. So this is that single. The Girl of My Best Friend and The Mess of Blues. And I also have a later copy. With that small RCA logo. So this one, uh, it's got a KT tax code. So I guess that's about 65, 66. Very hard to find these later pressings with the small logo so I do collect them when I can find them and they also release an EP from the album in Britain this is not an original unfortunately such a night with four songs from the LP and this one dates from 1981 this actually was part of a set of uh, EPs found this in Japan as well Not much more to say about Elvis is Back, really. It's probably my favourite album after a few compilation albums. A couple of Golden Records albums, a date with Elvis for LP fans only. Maybe I have a slight preference for those. But it's probably my favourite uh, studio album, except those few compilation albums. Okay, I'll leave it there for this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to do so down below. But that's it for this video. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching. Cheers.